Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon, dear students. In this lecture, we will be studying two topics. First one, Simon Commission, and the second one, Nehru Report. So, Simon Commission. The original name of Simon Commission was Indian Statutory Commission, Indian Statutory Commission 1927. First of all, we will be looking at the background around which Simon Commission or Indian Statutory Commission was appointed by the British government. What was the background behind the appointment of the Simon Commission? You have studied Government of India Act 1919. Government of India Act 1919. In the Government of India Act 1919, <coughs> there was a provision that a high power commission would be appointed to inquire into the functioning of the constitution introduced through the Government of India Act 1919. For the immediate background provided for the appointment of Simon Commission was that after the expiry of expiry of 10 years, a commission was it to be appointed to inquire into the functioning of the provisions introduced through the Government of India Act. So, th there was a provision in the Government of India Act that a high power commission was to be appointed at the elapse of 10 years of coming into effect the Government of India Act 1919 to inquire into the functioning of the constitutional reforms introduced through the Government of India Act 1919. This was the reason behind the appointment of the Simon Commission and as you are aware of it, the Government of India Act 1919 was actually implemented only in 1921. In this act, it was made it clear that the commission was to be appointed after 10 years. So, the commission wanted to have been appointed only in 1931. But the Secretary of State for India, Lord Birkenhead, as per the provision of the Government of India Act 1919, the commission wanted to have been appointed only in 1931 because the Government of India Act actually came into effect only in 1921 because of the problems of 1990s and 1920, Jalin Vailabak massacre, Rawalat Sadhyagraha and the non-cooperation movement. The act was enforced only in 1921. So, the commission was to be appointed only in 1931 that is 10 years after. But Lord Birkenhead announced the appointment of the commission in 1927, four years ahead, four years ahead of the scheduled time, the commission was appointed in 1927. One another thing we have to keep in mind that 
tenure was a very short period to evaluate the functioning of a constituent. However, the commission was appointed in 1927. First of all, we will be looking at why the commission was appointed earlier than scheduled by the Secretary of State for India, Lord Birkin Hutt. When this question was asked to the Secretary of State for India, he answered that the British government was liberal. government liberal to Indian affairs. The Secretary of State for India, Lord Birkinhead stated that the appointment of the commission earlier than scheduled was due to the liberal affairs of British government towards India, the commission was appointed earlier. But the actual reasons were different. One, the Tory government which was ruling Britain when this commission was appointed. The next election, what to have been conducted in 1929? The Tory government did not want to give this opportunity of appointing a high power commission relating to Indian affairs to Labour Party. It was very clear that Labour Party would come into power in 1929. So, the Tory, Tory government determined not to give the opportunity of appointing such a high power commission to labor party. If the commission was, was it to be appointed in 1931, the opportunity of appointing of this commission would have gone to labor party which was likely to come into power in 1929 in the election to be held to British parliament. This was one of the, one of the main reasons behind the appointment of the commission earlier than scheduled. The first reason was that the Tory government which did not want it to give the opportunity of appointing such a high power commission relating to India to Labour Party which was likely to come into power in the next general election scheduled to be held in 1929. As the Tory government in the 1929 election, the Labour Party got a majority support and it formed government. <coughs> this was the one reason behind the appointment of the commission earlier than scheduled. What was the next reason? Communal tension. The Hindu Muslim unity during the non cooperation days became a thing of the past. From 1923 onwards, communal rights broke out in India among the Hindus and the Muslims. If such a commission was sent to India, while communal rights were going on, the commission would make a low opinion about the Indians, low opinion about the Indians to govern themselves. If the communal rights were going on during the appointment of these high power commission relating to India. When the commission was sent to India during the period of the communal rights, the commission would record a very low opinion about Indians to govern themselves. Another opinion came from Professor Keith.
Professor Keith argued that it was due to the work of Swarajist party. Professor Keith argued that the appointment of the commission earlier than scheduled was the work of Swarajist party. Whatever may be the reason behind the appointment of the commission four years earlier than the schedule, the commission was told to examine following matters. One, working of provincial autonomy. The commission would inquire or examine the functioning of the provincial autonomy, then how far the representative institutions, representative institutions satisfactorily worked in the country. Three draft which draft for the future constitution of India. These were the terms of reference of the Simon Commission. Working of provincial autonomy, how far the representative institution satisfactory work it. Thirdly, draft for the future constitution of India. These were the terms of reference, terms of reference, terms of reference of Simon Commission. All the members of the Simon Commission were from British Parliament with the John Simon. as the chairman. All the members of the Simon Commission were from British Parliament. No Indian was appointed in this commission. All the seven members, there were seven members in this commission. All these seven members all the seven members from where the some uh, came from the British Parliament. Now, the major question arises why the British appointed all these five members from British Parliament? The British replied that since Simon Commission was required to submit his report to British Parliament all these members were appointed from British Parliament. One of the reasons expressed by the British government in the exclusion of the Indians from the high power commission was that since the commission was to submit its report to the British Parliament, all the members of this commission were selected from British Parliament, but there were two Indian members in the British Parliament who were the Lord Singha and Saklatwala. During this time, there were two Indians in the British Parliament, Lord Singha and Sakalatwala. They wanted to have been appointed as one of the members of this commission, but British government denied the appointment of any Indians in this commission. Why did the British decline to appoint? anyone from India as one of the members of this commission since the British government feared that 
what is British government fear? British government fear alliance between Labour Party members, Labour Party members with the Indians. Actually, the British government, the Tory government feared that Labour members would make an alliance with the Indians if any one of the Indians was appointed as one of the members of this commission. The second reason, Lord Irwin, Lord Irwin was the viceroy when Simon Commission was appointed. Lord Irwin stated that this commission would inquire about the capacity of Indians to govern, govern themselves. If the Indians were appointed to inquire the capability of the Indians to govern themselves, the report of the commission was likely to be collated. There would not to have been any objective analysis of the capability of the Indians to govern themselves. The governability of the Indians was likely to be collated. That is why Indians were excluded from this commission. This was the opinion tended by the Viceroy of India, Lord Irwin. He stated that the commission would inquire about the capability of the Indian city govern themselves. If a Indians were appointed to judge the governability of the Indians, the result was an objective finding. The report was likely to be collated. That is why Indians were excluded from this commission. This was the opinion intended by the Viceroy of India, Lord Irwin. When the commission reached India, it was greeted with the slogan, Simon go back. When it reached at Bombay, it was greeted with the slogan, Simon, go back. There were political parties which supported as well as which opposed and non-opposed the Simon Commission. Now, name the part, the part, the polit major political parties which opposed, opposed the Simon Commission which were the major political parties which opposed the Simon Commission, one Congress party, a section of All India Muslim League, a section of All India Muslim League, Hindu Magasafa, Hindu Magasafa, Liberals Federation, Liberals Federation, the Indian Revolutionary Group led by Fagat Singh, expressed the view that only the Indians should have a say in the framing of future constitution of India. These were the political parties which opposed the Simon Commission. It includes Congress Party, a section of All India Muslim League, Hindu Magasafa, and Liberals Federation. Revolutionary group under the leadership of Fagat Singh expressed the view that only the Indians would have a say in framing a future constitution for India. 
Now, we come to the four parties not opposed the Simon Commission, which were the major political parties which it did not oppose Simon Commission. It included a Muslim League under Muhammad Shafi. A section of Muslim League under the leadership of Muhammad Shafi did not oppose Simon Commission. 2. Justice Party at Madras Justice Party at Madras also did not oppose Simon Commission. Central Sikh Sangh Central Sikh Sangh, All India Achit Federation, All India Achit Federation. These were the major organizations which did not oppose the Simon Commission. Despite resistance from different parts of the country, Simon Commission paid two visits to India. First time it reached India on 3rd February 1928. As you have been told earlier, on 3rd February 1928 it reached Bombay. It was greeted with the slogan, Simon go back. On 3rd February 1928, Simon Commission paid its first visit to India. It was greeted with the slogan, Simon, go back. A hartal was observed on this day. Processions, meetings became common. The non-cooperation day is revived. In Lahore, a procession led by Lala Lajpat Roy Lala Lajpat Roy was lati charged by the police. He received a hit, lati hit, and later he succumbed to injuries in 1928. Lala Lajpat Roy died because of these injuries from Lati Charge in 1928. Jawaharlal Nagaru and G. B. Panth, Govinda Villa Panth, also Lati Charge. Non cooperation days revived, and in one of the Lati charges at Lahore, Lala Lajpat Roy got injuries and later he died. Jawaharlal Nagaru and Govinda Villa Pan also received also Lati charged by the police. Fagat Singh retaliated the death of Lala Lajpat Roy by killing Saunders, assistant superintendent of police. He led the police in lati charging of Lala Lajpat Roy in retaliation. Fagat Singh revenged the death of Lala Lajpat Roy by killing assistant superintendent of police Sonder. This protest movement proved beyond all doubt and dispute that the future constitution of India should be prepared by the Indians themselves. As you have been told, despite 
protest movements in India, Simon Commission visited twice in the country, February March 1928 and from October 1928 to April 1929. Despite resistance from different courts of different parts of the country, Simon Commission paid two visits, visits to India. First visit was from February 1928 to March 1928. His second visit was from October 1928 to April 1929. It visited across the country and prepared a report which was published 1930. Made. Based on the visits of the country, the Simon Commission prepared a report in May 1930. What were the provisions or the recommendations? What were the recommendations of the Simon Commission? Now we are going to analyze the recommendations. The recommendations made by the Simon Commission. 1. Separate electorates should be retained. Separate electorate should be retained. You have been studied that it was for the first time separate electorates were created for the Muslims through the Government of India Act 1909 and through the Government of India Act 1919, special electorates were given not only to the Muslims, but also the Sikh community. One of the recommendations tended by Simon Commission was that special electorates should be retained. Second, reservation of seats, reservation of seats for depressed classes, depressed classes. It was for the first time reservation recommendation was made for marginalized and depressed sections of the Indian society. Third recommendation ending of the diarchy in provinces. Through the Government of India Act 1919, a diarchical scheme of administration was introduced in provinces. It was a total failure. The Simon Commission recommended the abolition of the diarchical scheme of administration in provinces. The constitution should be federal. The constitution, the future constitution of India should be federal. What do I mean by federal? In a federal constitution, the powers of the central government and provincial governments are divided through the constitution. In a unitary constitution, all powers are concentrated in the hands of the central government. Simon Commission recommended that the character of the constitution going to introduce in India should be federal that is the powers between the central government and the provincial government should be divided by the constitution itself. No responsible government at the center. No elected government responsible to the legislature should not be created at center. It recommended the creation of a greater India, greater India consisting of British directly administered provinces and Indian states. Two different kinds of administrative units, there were provinces which were directly administered by the British, there were princely states or 
Indian states during the period of India's independence there were 562 Indian states which formed only the 23 percent of the territory of India while the British directly administered provinces formed 77 percent of the territory. By merging the directly administered British provinces and Indian states, the Simon Commission recommended that a greater India was it to be created. These were the recommendations tended by Simon Commission. All these recommendations tended by Simon Commission was rejected almost, almost, all pol political parties, all political parties in India. Since these recommendations were unsatisfactory and disappointing, the Indians rejected the recommendations made by Simon Commission in its report. This is what about the Simon Commission. Now, we are moving, moving to study the next topic Nehru report. As you have been told, Indians were not appointed in the Simon Commission. It was totally opposed by the most of the major political parties in the country and during this time Lord Birkenhead Lord Birkenhead challenged that Indians could not unite a common constitution or Indians could not unanimously frame a constitution. This was the challenge made by the Secretary of State for India, Lord Birkenhead. During the days of Simon Commission, Lord Birkenhead challenged the Indians to prepare a constitution with uniting all the major political parties in India. He expressed that Indians could not unite themselves to prepare a constitution for future governance of the country. Taking it as a challenge, all the political parties in India convened an all party meeting, an all parties meeting in February 1928. In response to challenge made by Lord Birkenhead that Indians could not unanimously prepare a constitution. All parties met together at a conference in February 1928. This all parties meeting was presided by M. A. Ansari. M. A. Ansari presided over the all parties meeting convened in February 1928. At the all party meeting, headed by M. A. Ansari, this decided to appoint a committee to prepare a new constitution, a new constitution for India. And 
with Motilal Nehru Motilal Nehru as the chairman of this committee was appointed and this committee submitted its report. This report came into known as Nehru report. The all party meeting interested Motilal Nehru to prepare a future constitution for India and this report submitted by Motilal Nehru came into known as Nehru report. This committee was headed by Motilal Nehru that is why this report came into known as Nehru report. Now, we are going to analyze where the recommendations tended by Motilal Nehru in his report. 1. India should have India should have the same constitutional status, the same constitutional status in the British Empire as other dominions as other dominions with the parliament having power to make laws and it should be known as commonwealth of india commonwealth of india this was the first recommendation or first proposal included in the nehru report india should have the same constitutional status in the british empire as other dominions with the parliament having power to make laws and india would come in known as commonwealth of India. This was the first proposal included in the report of Motilal Nehru. Secondly, the constitution the constitution should define fundamental rights to define fundamental rights and citizenship. This was the second proposal included in the Nehru report. The constitution, the future constitution to be made for the country should define what were the fundamental rights and who were to be the citizen of India. The third proposal, the legislative power would be vested with the king, British king. The legislative power should be vested with the British king, but it should be exercised by it should be exercised by the viceroy for making of legislation with the British parliament. The British parliament would make legislation on the Indian affairs. Legislative power would be vested with the British king means that with the only with the assent of the British king the legislation sponsored by the British parliament would become into law. That is why the legislator, legislative power would be vested with the British king, only with the assent of the British king, the legislation sponsored by the British parliament would become into law. 
but the power to make legislation should be vested with the parliament once the legislation was passed by the british parliament which it would receive the assent of the british king 5 an hierarchy of courts with the supreme court at apex an hierarchy of courts with the supreme court at apex needed to be established now the sixth recommendation made in the nehru report was that procedure power procedure power should be vested with the sender what do you mean by procedure power procedure power means the power to make legislation on the subjects not enumerated in the central list or provincial list this power came in the known as procedure power the procedure power would be vested with the central government that is the central government would make legislation on the subjects which were not enumerated either in the provincial list or the central list next pro next proposal made in the nehru report was that sindh to be separated sindh should be separated from bombay and it should be made a province the seventh recommendation made in the nehru report was that sindh should be separated from bombay and it should be made a separate province north west frontier province north west frontier province should be made a separate province this was the eighth recommendation made in the proposal of nehru report that north west frontier frontier province should be made a province ninth the principle it was related to the principle of of separate electorates as you know the separate electorates was introduced for the muslims first time in 1909 government of india act it was further extended by the government of india act 1919 it made clear that reservation of seats for muslims should be given wherever they were minority separate electorate should be given to muslims wherever they were minority and non muslims would be given reservation in north west frontier province relating to separate electoration yeah electorates the nehru report made it clear that separate electorates would be provided for the muslims at the center and the provincial legislature 
wherever they were in a minority and similar status should be given to non Muslims in northwest frontier province. Later two recommendations were added to the Nehru report. The separate electorate separate electorate or reservation should be revisited at the regular interval of at the regular interval of 10 years. This was the 10th recommendation included in the Nehru report that at the regular interval of 10 years the provision of reservation should be revisited. What was the last recommendation included in the proposal of Nehru report? Belujistan was it to be given the status of a province. These were the recommendations included in the Nehru report. Again the all parties met this time they met at Calcutta to discuss the recommendations made in the Nehru report all parties met again in December 1928 at Calcutta when the proposals made by Jawaharlal made by Motilal Nehru came up for discussion Muhammad Ali Jinnah opposed Nehru report he demanded that one third of the seats in central legislature should be reserved for the Muslims, but it was not acceptable to Indian National Congress. Hence, Muhammad Ali Jinnah left from the all party meeting convened at Calcutta in December 1928. He joined with the group led by Aga Khan and Muhammad Shafi. Muhammad Shafi at the all party meeting convened to discuss the proposals of Motilal Nehru, Muhammad Ali Jinnah opposed the reservation policy and he demanded that one third of the seats would be reserved for the <coughs> Muslims at the central legislature. It was opposed by other parties consequent upon which Muhammad Ali Jinnah left the meeting and he joined with the group led by Aga Khan and Muhammad Shafi. The All India Muslim League Conference, All India Muslim Conference was convened in Delhi on 1st January 1929. It passed a resolution at the All India Muslim Conference convened at Delhi on 1st January 1929 passed a resolution. Provinces in this resolution it included that provinces would have 
procedure e power. You have been told that procedure e power has a power to make legislation on the subjects which were not enumerated either in the central list or provincial list. Considering the vastness and diversity of the country, provinces would have the power to make a legislation on the subjects which were not included in the central list or provincial list that is the power of residuary. Secondly, the All India Conference resolution passed separate electorate should continue. Till the interest of the Muslims were safeguarded through the constitution. In this resolution, the second provision included that separate electorate should continue for the Muslims till their interest and the rights were constitutionally protected. In March 1929, Muhammad Ali Jinnah put forward before the All India Muslim League a detailed accounts of the demands of the Muslims. It is popularly known as 14 points. 14 points. In March 1929, Muhammad Ali Jinnah presented a demands of the Muslims to All India Muslim League. These demands popularly known as 14 points. It rejected the 14 points totally rejected Nehru report. Rejected Nehru report. It demanded that the constitution of India should be unitary. Unitary constitution was not acceptable. Nehru report made that the constitution of India should be unitary, while Muhammad Ali Jinnah argued that the unitary constitution was not acceptable to the All India Muslim League. They argued that a unitary constitution was not acceptable to them. They demanded the provinces should be autonomous, autonomous provinces. The provinces should be more power should be given to provinces and the central government should have only limited powers, more power should be given to provinces. If it was considered in five provinces, the All India Muslim League or the Muslims would get a majority, Northwest Frontier Province, Balochistan, Sindh, Bengal, and Punjab, because of large concentration of Muslim population, the Muslims would get majority in these provinces. Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose also criticized the Nehru report because of the acceptance of dominion status. Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra was argued that the Nehru report should stand for complete independence. Instead of complete independence, 
the Nehru report asked for only dominion status. All these are included in this lecture. Now, going to questions. Who did die due to police lathi charge? during the procession against Simon Commission. Question number 2. Who was the Secretary of State for India? Secretary of State for India during the appointment of Simon Commission. The appointment of Simon Commission. Question number 3. Who did preside all party conference? in 1928. Question number 4. Name the parties which opposed the Simon Commission. What were the proposals of Nehru report? Why did Muhammad Ali Jinnah oppose? Nehru report. Thank you. These are the questions we are expected to answer. Thank you.